Welcome, dear friends. It is an exciting day to study the Word of God. I invite you all to join me on another expedition of Through the Bible. So let us now begin our investigation through the pages of Scripture. In our previous episode, we saw how Jesus was rejected by cities that saw mighty works of miracles. Earlier, He had also sent out His disciples to present His claims. They have gone down the highways and byways until they have covered all the cities of Israel. As Jesus was rejected amid so much of messianic evidence, Jesus too turns to reject these unrepentant cities, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. He states that although Sodom and Gomorrah were terrible places, it will be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment than for these cities that heard the message of Jesus and rejected Him. There are a lot of people who are very hard to please or whose curiosity very hard to satisfy. And that was certainly true in our Lord's day as well. Even for us and many who are unsaved, we should pray that God would give us a heart of flesh, a heart that is receptive to God's voice. We should pray that God would have mercy on us, revealed His Son to us. Finally, Jesus speaks of putting our Lord and burden on Him. The only place in the world to put that burden is at the foot of the cross. He invites us to come and bring our burden of sin to Him. He can forgive us because on the cross, He bore the burden of our sin. Earlier, we have seen that several positions have arisen against the walk and message of Jesus. The people were both mesmerized yet perplexed by Jesus' teachings. Among these were not just common folks, but religious leaders who claimed to be well-versed with Hebrew scriptures. Aren't you curious about how Jesus responded to such situations? More so, what would the Pharisees or Sadducees attempt out of such conflicts? May God open His Word to us as we straight away get into our study today. In today's study, let us look at the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew is not trying to give a biography of the life of Jesus, nor is he recording the events in a chronological order. He presents Christ as King. He was born a King and gave what we call the Sermon on the Mount, which was the ethic of the Kingdom, the manifesto of the King. He demonstrated that he had a dynamic in the miracles he performed. And then he sent out his Apostles. The reaction was rejection. And then the King pronounced judgment on the cities. Now there breaks upon the open a conflict between the Lord Jesus and the religious rulers of that day. The Pharisees in particular, apparently, they were friendly to him at first, but now they break with him over the question of the Sabbath day. We will see the Sabbath question in two places, on the outside in the field and then again on the inside in the synagogue. Matthew chapter 12 verse 1. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. We will see in this episode that Jesus asserts that he is the Lord of the Sabbath day. But before we get involved in the Sabbathic argument, which has been ever since raging, let's look at the reason the disciples were pulling off and eating the grain. Why were they doing it? Because they were hungry. See, the Pharisees had established 39 categories of actions forbidden on the Sabbath, based on interpretation of Jewish customs. By picking wheat and rubbing them, the disciples were technically harvesting, according to the Pharisees. The Pharisees could not and would not want to see beyond the law's technicalities. There was no room for compassion. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. Matthew chapter 12, verse 2. The Pharisees say to the Lord Jesus, Why do you permit it? He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? Matthew chapter 12 verse 3. We find the record of this in 1 Samuel chapter 21, 1 to 6. It was during the days of David's rejection as king while Saul was ruling, this happened. Likewise, the Lord Jesus was being rejected as king now. His messianic claim had not been acknowledged. Now he takes care of his men, regardless of the Sabbath day observance. And David took care of his men, although it meant breaking the Mosaic law. You see, my friend, People are more important to God. If you are God's people, 
then people will have a priority in your life. Matthew chapter 12 verse 4 to 5. He entered the house of God and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread which was not lawful for them to do but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple desecrate the day and are yet innocent? Did you know that the priests actually worked on the Sabbath day? Jesus was not condoning the breaking of the law. Instead, he was emphasizing discernment and compassion in enforcement. I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. Matthew chapter 12 verse 6 The Lord Jesus here claims superiority over the most holy center of their religious life, which was the temple. As far as the Pharisee was concerned, he had blasphemed. Not only had he broken the Sabbath, but he had blasphemed. The Pharisee had missed the whole purpose of the temple, which was to bring people to God. My friend, it is possible to be caught up with the symbols and the instruments of worship instead of the Lord himself. Jesus continued, If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. Matthew chapter 12 verse 7 For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings, said the prophet Hosea chapter 6 verse 6. Our Lord defends his men by saying that they did not break the Sabbath day. Why? It's because our heart's attitude comes first, not the regulations. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew chapter 12 verse 8 Believe me, he put his hand on the most sacred observance they had when he said he was the Lord of the Sabbath. In the eyes of the Pharisee, he could make no greater claim. It certainly engendered their bitterness and their hatred. By saying this actually, he claimed to be greater than the Sabbath. See, he created the Sabbath and he had every authority over it. But the Pharisees would not see it. Matthew chapter 12 verse 9 Going on from that place, he went to their synagogue. Notice that he went into their synagogue. Not ours, but theirs. He said something similar regarding the temple. At first, it was God's temple. But he finally said, Your house is left unto you desolate. A man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? Matthew 12, 10 to 11. As they pointed to the man with the shriveled hand, the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus by asking him if it was legal to heal on the Sabbath. The Sabbath rulers said that people could be healed only if their life was in danger. Jesus healed on the Sabbath several times and none of these healings were due to emergencies. If Jesus had waited another day, he would have been submitting to the Pharisees' authority, showing that the petty rules were equal to God's law. My friend, God is a God of people and not rules. The best time to reach out to someone is when he or she needs help. Matthew chapter 12 verse 12 How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. This is the crux of the whole matter. Should he do good on the Sabbath day, regardless of their answer? Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. Matthew chapter 12 verse 13 Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath day. Did he break the law? What's your answer? My answer is that he did not break the law. Now we look at how the Pharisees plotted the death of Jesus. This marks the break between the religious rulers and Jesus. Here is where they made the decision to destroy him. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Verse 14 Up to this point, the Pharisees had been friendly. They had wanted to hitch their wagon to his star and go with him. But the Lord refused to go along with them and they became his enemies. The break is made over the question of the Sabbath day and the conflict comes out in the open. From here, they begin now to plot his death and they undoubtedly wanted to arrest him at this time. But they were afraid of the crowds. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. Many followed him and he healed all their sick. Verse 15 The action of the Pharisees led Jesus to withdraw temporarily because his hour had not come. They will not touch him until the appointed time. It is interesting to note that in this verse, 
that Jesus did not heal only a few in the crowd. He healed them all. We cannot even conceive of the impression that this made in that day. It was something absolutely astounding. They had to accept or reject him. It was impossible to be neutral. Matthew chapter 12 verse 16 Warning them not to tell who he was. The Lord did not warn people to come to him for the wrong reason. That would raise false hopes and hinder his ministry. And further, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out till he leads justice to victory. Matthew chapter 12 verse 17 to 20. A bruised reed shall he not break? No. He will indeed bind up that reed. Who will let him do so? And a smoking flax shall he not quench? No. If that one continues to reject him, the smoking flax will break out into the fire of judgment. The Lord won't quench it because man has a free will. Matthew chapter 12 verse 21. In his name, the nations will put their hope. In our day, friend, there is a definite moving out, not only towards the fulfillment of the prophecy in general, but for the fulfillment of prophecy concerning the Gentiles. They are to be saved. Christ's rejection by his own people led to his gracious offer to the Gentiles. We see that in the book of Acts when we read how he commissioned Paul to be a missionary to the Gentiles. Acts chapter 26 verse 18 To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Now let's go into a very interesting discussion on the unpardonable sin. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? Matthew chapter 12 verse 22 to 23. In other words, this is our Messiah. He has the credentials. This was a tremendous miracle he performed. Just as great as the raising of the dead, if not greater. The continued miracles of Jesus in healing and casting out demons convinced the people that he was the son of David, the Messiah. But what did the Pharisees say? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Matthew chapter 12 verse 24 This is the question of the unpardonable sin. Follow this very carefully. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. Matthew chapter 12 verse 25 to 27 They would never say that their own people cast out demons by Beelzebub. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Verse 28 The kingdom of God is come upon you in the presence of the Messiah. Christ is saying, I am here. My power to cast out demons is my credential. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man that he can rob his house? He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Matthew chapter 12 verse 29 to 32. Now please hear me carefully. There is no sin committed yesterday that the Lord would not forgive today because He died for all sin. The Holy Spirit came into the world to make real the salvation of Christ to the hearts of men. If you resist the working of the Spirit of God, when He speaks to you, my friend, there is no forgiveness, of course. There is no forgiveness, 
because you have rejected salvation made real to you by the holy spirit and it is the work of the spirit of god to regenerate you in mark chapter 3 the lord amplifies the matter of the unpardonable sin by saying that it attributes the spirit's work to satan that christ has performed these miracles by belzebu when actually he was doing them by the power of the spirit of god you see they were rejecting the witness of himself and of the holy spirit my friend in our day that particular sin cannot be committed because it could only be committed when jesus was here upon the earth there is no act of sin that you can commit for which there is no forgiveness of course if you resist the holy spirit there is no forgiveness because he is bringing forgiveness it is like the man who is dying from a certain disease and the doctor tells him there is a remedy for it the man refuses to take the remedy and dies not from the disease but from refusing to take the remedy there is a remedy for the disease of sin and the holy spirit applies it but if you resist it there is no remedy that is the only way sin can be unpardonable today let us now go to matthew chapter 12 verse 38 then some of the pharisees and the teachers of the law said to him teacher we want to see a miraculous sign from you the scribes and the pharisees now use another subtle approach to him they appear to fall in step with his program by asking for a sign they have no intention of believing because of a sign they are trying to trap him note how the lord answers them see many people say if i could just see a real miracle then i could really believe in god but jesus responds to the pharisee applies to us we have plenty of evidence jesus birth death resurrection ascension and centuries of his work in believers instead of looking for additional miracles accept what god has given and move forward he answered a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign but none will be given to it except the sign of the prophet jonah for as jonah was 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of a huge fish so the son of man will be 3 days and 3 nights in the heart of the earth matthew chapter 12 verse 39 to 40 the lord categorically refused to grant them a sign but directed them back to two incidents in the old testament the first incident is the account of the prophet jonah jonah was apparently raised from the dead when he was in the fish god brought him out of darkness and death into light and life jonah's experience was typical of the coming intimate and the resurrection of jesus christ the men of dinaway will stand up at judgment with this generation and condemn it for they repented at the preaching of jonah and now one greater then jonah is here matthew chapter 12 verse 41 the ninevites received jonah and his preaching after his miraculous deliverance from the big fish and they repented the acts of israel as a nation place her in a much worse position because she did not receive her messiah and did not repent the second incident that jesus referred to them concerns solomon the queen of sheba will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to solomon's wisdom and now one greater than solomon is here verse 42 jesus was greater than jonah and greater than solomon the queen of sheba heard solomon and traveled from the ends of the earth to hear his wisdom and the lord jesus christ has come from heaven but they would not turn to him these gentiles recognized the truth about god when it was presented to them unlike the religious leaders who ignored the truth even though it stared in their faces well friends we've almost come to the end of today's program but i think we have time to just look at a few more verses matthew chapter 12 verse 43 when an evil spirit comes out of a man it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it a man has an unclean spirit and the unclean spirit leaves him the man thinks he is all cleaned up then what happens then it says i will return to the house i left when it arrives it finds the house unoccupied swept clean and put in order then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and live there and the final condition of that man is worse than the first this is how it will be with this wicked generation verse 44 and 45 in other words reformation is no good my friend you can quit doing many things but that won't make you a believer we must also take the second step of filling our life with god's word and god's holy spirit 
unfilled and complacent people are easy targets of the devil. Matthew chapter 12 verse 46 to 49. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Lord is saying that the strongest relationship today is the relationship between Christ and a believer. Friend, if you are a child of God and you have unsaved family members, you are closer to Jesus Christ than you are to your own kin, including the mother that bore you. You are more closely related to other believers than you are to unsaved members of your family. This is tremendous. Jesus was not denying his responsibility to his earthly family. On the contrary, he provided for his mother's security as he hung on the cross. John chapter 19 verse 25 to 27. His mother and brothers were present in the upper room at the Pentecost. Acts chapter 1 verse 14. Instead, Jesus was pointing out that spiritual relationships are as binding as physical ones. And he was paving the way for a new community of believers. The universal church, our spiritual family. When we are a child of God, you will know that you are part of a worldwide fraternity of brothers and sisters. You have come to a place to belong, my friend. You are part of a loving brotherhood of believers. If not, you must be. There is security and strength in a fellowship. In Jesus, you are not a lone ranger. You are one among the disciples. Well, friends, as we come to a close, I hope you are blessed from what you learned today. We have learned today on how Jesus countered the Pharisees twice with regards to his miracles on the Sabbath day. Jesus boldly stated of himself to be the Lord of the Sabbath. Up to this point, the Pharisees had been friendly, but now the beginning to plot his death finally began. Even to this day, for the sake of rules and for the sake of religious rituals, many a times we stop ourselves from extending help and support to others. But we should always remember that to do good, there are no rules and boundaries. We also see from our study today that Christ's rejection by His own people led to His gracious offer to the Gentiles. We show the gradual progression in the call of the Gentiles to salvation with the commissioning of Paul as a missionary to the Gentiles in Acts 26 verse 18. How fortunate are we, dear friends, for God to open the way of salvation to us. Today, the offer of this salvation is made clear to us through the Holy Spirit whom Jesus sent on His behalf. Therefore, we should never resist or blaspheme the Holy Spirit. If we keep the seed of faith and salvation strong and allow the Holy Spirit to direct our lives, we will not be wavering around asking for signs from God every now and then. We are to stay faithful once we decide to repent. We should guard ourselves from being enticed by our old lifestyle. With these lessons, friends, let us keep reading the Bible and stay tuned to Through the Bible. May God bless you richly. Music